following on from my previous video, the Antrino is so versatile that I thought I'd make another and talk about other things that I didn't feature last time. Something I didn't mention was that the current consumption is around 90 milliamps. That's apparently quite a bit less than other RF test instruments and means that you can get quite good battery life from it. For instance, let's say that you had two amp hour AA batteries, rechargeables, as is fairly common. Then, if you say roughly a hundred milliamps, then that's 20 hours of use. So that should be good for quite a few portable antenna testing sessions. Also, I finally tore the plastic off the screen. I couldn't do it with my fingers, but with some very careful poking with a screwdriver around the edges, just be very careful so you don't scratch or break anything, I was able to get it off. The first thing I'll do is I'll set it up as a short range radio beacon. I'm on SNA mode and I'll connect the antenna to the RF out. As for how far it transmits, let's just say it can go a few hundred metres on VHF. In the previous video, I put a crystal across the output and input of the Antrino and in the SNA mode could see its frequency. Now I'm doing the same with an inductor and capacitor in series. The inductor is an RF choke at 4.7 microhenry and the capacitor is a disc ceramic at 68 picofarad. As a rule of thumb, 5 microhenry with 100 picofarad resonates at 7 megahertz. With the smaller capacitor especially, the resonant frequency of this will be a bit higher. What you can see is that there is a pronounced dip just above 9 megahertz. The steps are fairly coarse at around 80 kilohertz or so, so we need to zero this in and give it a smaller span so we can get a better indication. So what we can do is we'll just hold the VFO button down and you'll notice that the center frequency changed to 8.971 megahertz. And we'll reduce the span to one megahertz and then press OK. And so we can see the dip is magnified. I'll just put this on SNA. In fact, before I do that, I'll go up to a bigger span on SNA. And it's not very pronounced, but there is actually a peak around that same frequency. Um, it's letting more of the signal through. Whereas if we go down, here's four and a half megahertz minus 32 dB. At its peak, it's minus 25. So it is operating as a series tuned circuit, but it's not very sharp and not a very high Q. If you had a sharper curve, with a more pronounced peak, that would indicate a higher Q tuned circuit. Here I've got just the single capacitor, 68 picofarad, between the RF in and RF out connections. I've got a center frequency of 15 megahertz, a span of 30 megahertz, and if you look at the curve, and I'm on the SNA setting, there's minimum attenuation at the top end of the frequency range, around 28, 30 megahertz. But as you can see, as you go down in frequency, increasingly there's more attenuation. And the attenuation drops off greatly down below three megahertz, and especially down around one megahertz and below which is what you'd expect because a series capacitor resists RF more at a lower frequency 
than it does at a higher frequency. Next thing is I've got this toroid, not sure of its value, but I will put it across the capacitor. Now we've got a parallel tuned circuit and you can see a very dramatic dip around 11 and a half megahertz. We'll do the trick we learnt before, hold the button down. That's changed the center frequency. We can cut the span back. And here we've got a finer curve. If you wanted to, you could use this frequency, 11.070 megahertz, and the capacitor value, which we know at 68 picofarad, as a way of calculating the inductance value. There are online inductance, capacitance, and frequency calculators. I'll have a link to one below. So this is a way of measuring an unknown inductance. Now that we know the inductance is 3 microhenry, we've got a variable capacitor that we'll put in parallel with the inductor and we'll be able to calculate its capacitance. It's not direct reading, but with the formula online, we can still get its value. This is minimum capacitance with the plates unmeshed. And we'll just recenter the frequency to 28 megahertz. And at the same time, we'll go for a smaller span. So we'll just remember this 28.7 megahertz. Now we will change to a lower frequency, lower center frequency. Just moving the capacitor so the plates are nearer to being fully meshed. You can see the trough start to appear on the screen. And as we keep going, right now it's about 8 megahertz. This is at half capacitance, around 6.6 .6 megahertz. And we're still increasing capacitance and it goes towards the left of the screen. This is now full capacitance. Um, we want to recenter that. 4.5 megahertz we'll go to a smaller span and we can more accurately find it at around 4.6 megahertz we just need to do some calculations we can get a range of 4.6 to 28.7 megahertz and that is with the three microhenry inductance. For the lowest capacitance, we've put in the highest frequency of 28.7, three microhenry, you calculate, and the capacitance value is shown in microfarads, which we don't want. We want it in picofarads, so we'll calculate again. And we can see its minimum is 10 picofarads, which is fairly typical for a variable capacitor. Now we'll put in 4.6 megahertz and calculate it again. And our capacitance is 399. So this is a 10 to 400 picofarad capacitor, ideal for use in a crystal set or other HF applications, including antenna couplers. 
It wouldn't be able to handle a lot of power, but, but it would be fine for QRP use. Next thing we'll try is the Antrino as an RF field strength meter. I've got some stiff metal wire connected to the RF input connection. I've set it in the power mode. The span will make it 100 kilohertz. We're on a frequency in the two meter band. So we'll press OK. This is two meters FM. I'll just talk into the microphone. Uh, oh, oh, oh. So from that you could see it getting broader when I spoke and caused frequency modulation to happen. Next thing I'll do is to do a crude range check. Now we've got the Antrino near the micro bit X set to 7 megahertz SSB. You can see that it's minus 40 dB M on the peak. That's just a relative indication. Now going up to its harmonic. You can see that there's a harmonic there, but it's much lower. So that's been part two. More things you can do with the Antrino RF test instrument. Details on getting it are on my previous video or you can have a look at the link below to hfsignals.com thanks to Ashar Farhan VU2ESE for the review unit